Hello Soistas! My name is Gilsan. Welcome to my channel! I'm super happy and excited today because I'm releasing my first sewing pattern. So we are going to make the scarlet bag together. You can find the link in the description box to download the PDF pattern. In this video, I will explain to you all the steps so you can make this bag easily. I designed this bag for Wonder Moms, working women, and it's also suitable for school, for the gym, and as a travel bag. There are multiple pockets, handles, an adjustable strap, and shoulder straps for mums. I hope you're gonna love it, and if you watch until the end, I have a little surprise for you. I placed and pinned all the pattern pieces onto the outer fabric. Then, I cut the pieces carefully. I repeat the same thing for the lining pieces. After that, I will overlock all around the outer fabric pieces and the lining except the pieces number 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. This step is optional, so if you don't have a serger, you can skip this part. My fabric is freeing a lot, so I prefer to do it. If you don't have a serger and your fabric is freeing a lot, then try to be gentle when you handle your fabric, or you can zigzag stitch around the edges. Now that I overlocked the fabric pieces, I can prepare the interfacing. I folded the pattern piece 12 like this, because the interfacing must be cut without the seam allowances. You can do the same thing for the handles. I won't add interfacing on the handles because my outer fabric is quite thick, so I don't need extra stability here. So let's press the interfacing pieces onto the fabric. For the base, instead of using interfacing, I will use foam like this one, so it will be sturdier. If I remember correctly, it's 5mm in thickness. I will sew the foam on the lining base piece 5mm from the edge. As my outer fabric is thick, I won't use interfacing on pieces number 2, 5, 6 and 10 because I don't need it. But I advise you to put some interfacing if your fabric isn't as thick as mine. It will be so nice, trust me. In some pieces like the side pockets and front pockets, I mentioned interface only the half. So instead of cutting your interfacing on the fold of the pattern piece, like with the main fabric and the lining, just cut it as it is. So it's the half. To make it easier, you should put the piece names on tags so you don't get confused with all the pieces. I take the adjustable strap that I interfaced, fold the edge by one centimeter all the way down and press. I do the same thing on the other edge. After that, I fold it in half and press all the way down. I repeat the same thing with the handles, the connectors and the shoulder straps. I fold the strap right sides together like this and pin. I will sew here one centimeter from the edge and I do the same thing on the other edge. I repeat the same process on the stroller straps. Here is what it looks like. I cut the excess fabric and the corners. Then I turn the strap the right way around. After that, I pin the edge all the way down. I will top stitch both sides 2 mm from the edge. Here 
here, I have two lobs to claw clasps and one adjustable slide buckle. I take the end of the strap and insert it into the slider on one side. Then bring it up and over the bar and back down through on the other side of the slider. I move the slider down the strap like this and keep a look. Then through the same end, I insert the lobster claw clasp. I make sure the hook is on the same side as the loop of the strap. After, I insert the same end into the slider on the other side of the loop. Then bring it up and over the bar and back down through on the other side of the slider. I pull the end about 5 cm and I pin it like this. I will sew just right here. For the other end, I insert the other lobster claw clasp and I fold by 3 cm approximately and pin. Make sure you fold towards the wrong side. I will sew this end as well. I take the pieces number 7 and place one outer fabric and one lining right sides together and pin the top edge. I will sew 1 cm from the edge. I repeat the same thing with the pieces number 9. Place the lining and the outer fabric right sides together and pin the top edges. I sew 1 cm from the edge. Now I can press the seams open. Then I fold pocket pieces in half and press again like this. After that, I fold in half the outer side pockets and the front outer pockets and press. These are pieces number 5 and 6. Next, I will top stitch the top edges of pieces 5, 6, 7 and 9, approximately 2 mm from the edge. I advise you to increase the stitch length of your machine. You'll see the top stitches will look nicer on the pockets. After that, I measure 1.5 cm from the first stitch that I just did and put a mark, so I can place my needle accordingly to top stitch 1.5 cm from the first stitch. I will top stitch the pieces 5, 6, 7 and 9 again. It's time to do the elasticated pockets. I take the elastic band and I cut two pieces the same size as the inner side pocket. Then I take the piece number 9 and mark the middle. I trace a line in the middle like this. I repeat the same thing with the inner front and back pockets to cut the elastic bands. Now the fun part. I will use a safety pin to insert the elastic band in the top edge of the pockets. I leave an excess of 1 cm approximately and secure one end with a pin like this. And I pull the elastic from the other edge until it's gathered a little bit. I don't gather it too much because it's nicer this way. Then I secure this end as well. I repeat the exact same process with the inner side pockets. I sew here 5 mm from the edge to secure the elastic. I take the line inside piece and place it right side facing up. Then I put the elasticated inner side pocket on top like this. The outer fabric is facing up here. Then I pin the sides. And here to pin the bottom, I fold it in half like this. Make sure the sides are flat and pin the side of the fold. Check it out. Open the fold slightly and press it like this and pin all the layers. This is an easy way to make box splits. I will sew 5 mm from the edge. Mm -hmm. 
I will do the same thing for the inner front and back pockets. I take the lining front panel and mark the middle. Then I pin the sides of the lining front panel and the inner front pocket together. I align the middle like this and pin. After, I make the box pleats in the middle of each pocket. I will sew 5 mm from the edge and top stitch the middle line. Here I have the side piece right side facing up and I place the outer side pocket on top right side facing up as well. I pin around like this. I will sew all around 5 mm from the edge but leave an opening. For the zip, let's start with the zipper tab. I take two zipper tabs and place them right sides together in a sandwich between the zip. I do the same thing on the other edge and I will sew here one centimeter from the edge. Then I top stitch the zipper tabs two millimeters from the fold. This is what it looks like. After I mark the middle of the zip and the zipper piece. Now I put the zipper piece on top of the zip right sides together and match in the middle. I pin them together and it's not a big deal that the zipper tabs are exceeding the edges. Then I take the lining zipper pieces and place them on top, right sides facing down like this. I pin all the layers together. The zip is in a sandwich between the outer zipper piece and the lining zipper piece. I will sew here one centimeter from the edge. If you are not comfortable sewing all the layers together in one take, then you can sew first the outer zipper piece with the zip and then sew the lining zipper piece. I do the same thing on the other side of the zip band. After, I press the zip piece on both sides. I will top stitch the outer and lining zipper pieces together on both sides of the zip. Here I have the two connectors. I insert the D-ring and fold the connector in half. I put a mark 1.5 cm from the edge to leave an excess to the connectors from the side like this. I will sew 5 mm from the edge to secure the connectors. You can do a normal stitch or a zigzag stitch. I already traced the zip box on the wrong side of one of the number 8 pieces. I measure 5 cm from the sides and the top edge and place marks. I pin around the box. I will sew all around following the line. Now I will trace the cutting lines. So I trace a line in the middle of the box, then I trace two V shapes, two centimeters from the edge, like this. I cut carefully on the middle line and the V shapes. I flip the zip pocket piece to the wrong side through the hole like this. Then I press around the box. Ta da! After, I place the zip underneath and pin around the box. Once that's done, I will sew around the box 2 mm from the edge. I place the other number 8 piece right sides together and I pin the two layers together 
and only the two layers. Now I will sew all around. Now that I finished the inner zip pocket, I can pin the inner back pockets. It's the same process as the inner front pockets. Here on the pattern, you can see where to place the handles. I will put some marks to know where to place them exactly. Then I measure one centimeter from the strap edges and place a mark. I do this because the straps will exceed by one centimeter when I will sew them in place. I put the handle along the marks and I measure three centimeters from the top edge, mark it on the handle and place a pin. I do the same thing on the other side. Now I can pin between the marks. For now, I will only sew between the pins two millimeters from the edge on both sides. Now I can sew the rest of the handles. I leave an excess of one centimeter from the bottom of the outer front panel. Then I pin the handles following the marks on both sides. I will top stitch both edges like I did earlier for the handles. But I will stop here because we already sewed this part of the handle. You can sew a box X stitch here as mentioned on the pattern. I fold the piece 6 in half and place a mark in the middle. Then I trace a line in the center like this. I take the outer front panel and place the outer front pockets on top like this. I match the center line with the center of the panel and I pin all around. I will sew the sides and the bottom 5 mm from the edge and then top stitch the line. I take the lining base and the inner side pockets. I first check that I place the pockets on the right side, so like this. Then I place them right sides together with the base and pin the sides. I will sew here one centimeter from the edge. I repeat the same process with the outer base and the side pockets. On top of the zip piece, I place the outer side pockets with the base that I sewed earlier. I pin the outer layers together, careful to not pin the lining. Then I flip the zip piece and place the inner side pockets right sides together with the lining zip piece. I only pin the lining layers together. I will only sew here. I won't sew through the connectors yet. Here, I place a mark 12 mm from both edges. To close the opening where the D-ring connectors are, you can top stitch between the marks. The layers were too thick for my sewing machine, so I ended up closing the opening by doing an invisible stitch. If you have the same problem as me and you don't want to do a hand sewing, then you can sew through the connectors when you assemble the zip piece to the side pockets. Here I will assemble the outer front and back panels to the base. First, I match the center of the back panel and the outer base and I pin. Then I pin the corners but I make sure to fold the seam allowances towards the pockets. I will sew here but only between the pins. Make sure to not sew all alone because otherwise you will struggle assembling the panels to the side pockets and the zip piece.
this is where I just sewed. Now I match the middle of the zip piece with the middle of the back panel top edge. I pin here, right sides together, then I clip all around. I will sew one centimeter from the edge. I do the same thing with the outer front panel, but make sure to leave the zip open. I cut the excess fabric off the handles. So, now I will sew the lining front and back panels to the lining base. But I make sure that the zipped inner pocket is well placed on the back side of the bag. It's the same process as earlier. First, I pin and sew the bottom right sides together. There you go, I sewed the lining front and back panels to the lining base. To sew the rest, I flip the lining panel like this and align the middle of the zip and the top edge of the panel together. Then I pin all around. If you get confused here, make sure that the pieces are pinned and sewed right sides together. And when you open the bag completely, it should look like this. You can see one side is the outer bag and the other side is the lining. I will continue to pin the lining front panel as well, but make sure you leave an opening on the top edge so you can flip the bag the right way around. And voila! I just finished sewing the lining. Now let's turn it the right way around. I gently push the corners and place the lining inside the bag. I just need to sew the opening with an invisible stitch. But if you are not comfortable with an invisible stitch, then you can finish this part with your sewing machine. I cut the excess fabric and the corners then I turned it the right way around. I cut four pieces of 8 cm of velcro, so two soft and two sticky velcro strips. First, I pin the strap. After, I place a mark 2 cm from both edges. This is where I will put the velcro strips. I pin the soft velcro strip on one side. Then, I roll the strap to see on which side I need to pin the sticky side. So it's here. I pin it in place and I will sew both sides 2 mm from the edge. After, I insert the lobster claw clasps, fold the strap in half, like this. I pin to secure it and I will sew just right here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. For the launch of my first pattern, I will choose 5 sewisters to have this pattern for free. So check out my Instagram for all the details. If you have any questions, you can comment down below as always, and I'll get back to you. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.